today we are working in the garden and in our yard and it's still technically winter because we have frost in the morning but we are excited to start working and waking up the garden for the spring months. We had a small selection of things growing. We had some artichoke, we have our citrus trees and things like that, but our herb garden, we had to put on hold because we didn't set up irrigation in the fall. Our eucalyptus tree had to be trimmed and all the boxes had to be moved and limbs fell. And so now we're kind of wanting to wake it back up this spring. We're amending the soil, we're moving the boxes, getting everything back in order. I also have this succulents garden and I'm gonna use these pots, these hanging pots that I found in my shack and I'm just gonna fill them, I'm gonna transplant some succulents, fill them up, hang them in front of my studio. In this video, I'm also gonna share with you guys what we do with our grass to get it nice and even and looking pretty for the spring and summer months. So I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into the video starting with that. So right here, my husband is pulling some seed and he's gonna be spreading that across the grass. We also make sure to put plenty of seed in areas that are bare or patchy. And then we take some of our compost, which is our cover soil, and we basically put that on top of the seed so that the birds don't get to it and eat it all. And it just kind of acts as a protection for the seeds. And also the seeds can really germinate with a little bit of cover soil. So we do this a lot around this time of the year just to really make sure that the grass looks nice and even. Between the gophers and the dogs, you know, we definitely have patchy areas of the grass. So we try to work on that and uh, when we do that consistently, we can definitely have even really beautiful grass. Now we're moving over to the herb garden. This was the herb garden, which looked really great last year. But again, like I said, we have a pretty large eucalyptus tree that had to be trimmed. So we had to move all of the boxes. We started collecting these boxes when we lived in our old house. But we still use them because they work really great. You can find them at Citrus Tree nurseries. Eventually we would plant directly in the ground. We are actually prepping the soil by mulching. So underneath the boxes, they're sitting on top of an area that is mulched. And what mulch does is when you put mulch on top of dirt, the dirt underneath slowly over time throughout the seasons becomes very soft and moist and workable. Where the dirt on an area that isn't mulched is just hard hard as a rock, especially in our area. So we'll be able to plant in the ground in the next few years, but for now we have these boxes, we love them. And so what we're gonna do is just make sure they're even in terms of how far apart they are from each other, that we have pathways in between them. And then in the next few weeks, you know, after it starts to get a little bit warmer, we'll plant our seeds. And the goal will be to have a really lush, beautiful, full herb garden come spring and summer. We don't need them to be perfect, but we want them to be as even and straight as possible, just so that it's aesthetically pleasing. So we use a string to kind of help us make sure uh, we can push them up against it and that the line is straight uh, for all the boxes. Our aloe vera, it's so funny, we had that aloe vera plant for a while and it started really small and it would die and then come back and die and then it's just thriving right now and it's one of the only ones that survived. So we have the aloe, but we're gonna have to replant everything else. So once the boxes are lined up straight, now we have to straighten up the mulch underneath all of the boxes and make those as even as possible so that they're not wonky so that's what we were doing together and uh, so yeah it, it definitely took a little bit of prep work to make it look really pretty and to get everything organized and ready for when we do plant or transplant our herbs it's so worth it for me um, all the work that leads up to having such a beautiful lush herb garden it's one of my favorite places to reflect and sit and enjoy the spring and the summer so I absolutely love it and uh we love to utilize the ingredients as well that we grow for food and for 
I like to make remedies and things like that. So we just really enjoy it. And so we're excited to get it back up and running again. So once we evened out all the boxes, it was now time to amend the soil within the boxes. So I had to go through and pick out any dead leaves and mulch. Luckily, I could just throw that on the ground because the ground is mulch right now. And again, like I said, that really helps the soil underneath so that we can actually plant directly into the ground in the future in this area of the property. So I have a hand tiller. I'm removing any dead roots and then I'm also tilling the current soil that's in there. I'm gonna add some new fresh compost to the mix and then continue to till so that all of the boxes have the same amount of soil as well. Uh, make sure the soil comes up to the same point in the boxes. That really helps the overall aesthetic of the garden as well and how things grow. So just going out and cleaning out each individual box and prepping the soil. Now, once we finished all of this, we had soil that's ready to go. So now we can plant when we're ready. We can transplant when we're ready. And if you see the little black tube that's in the box, that's gonna be irrigation. So we're gonna set up irrigation this year as well so that we don't have to hand water all of these herbs. It's hard to keep it alive when you have to leave or go out of town and you don't have irrigation set up. So we usually have irrigation set up to a timer so that the timer pops on, it waters the garden, and then we just have to keep an eye on it every day, but it, it keeps it minimal upkeep. Now I'm just kind of removing all the roots and prepping all of the soil for each box, getting it all ready to go. And now when we're ready, we can plant or transplant our new herbs. Of course, anything that's dead or that we pull, we go ahead and put back into compost. So um, all of that goes into an area that we compost for the future and it creates a really beautiful soil. So I'm gonna keep all of these roots for the compost. Back when we moved into this house, we had an old fountain that wasn't working that we kind of tore down and we had the bottom of it left. So we just put a few succulents plants in there and it overflowed. It turned into this really out of control succulents garden. The great thing about succulents is once it's happy, it just thrives and goes crazy. What I'm doing here is trimming my succulents garden and then I'm gonna transplant that into these hanging planters that I found in my shack. So when I was putting away my Christmas items, I saw these and thought, oh, I need to pull these back out for the spring. Right here I have compost, vermiculite, and sand. Now there's debate whether vermiculite or perlite is better for succulents, but we use about a handful and a half of vermiculite, a handful and a half of sand, and we mix that with compost or soil. And then I'm gonna put that in these hanging planters, and then I'm basically gonna give my succulents a haircut and transplant the leftovers into these hanging planters. But first I'm gonna prep the soil so that this is a happy place to live for the succulents and they love sand and vermiculite mixed in with the compost. So for these size containers, a handful and a half of each is probably perfect. Succulents does not like to be overwatered. Here we have a pipe that has condensation so it kind of it leaks a little bit. So we actually just put this watering can underneath it and we collect the water. We use that water for our succulents. So every few days it fills up and we use it for our succulents garden and that keeps our succulents really happy. I decided that each planter would have a different variety of succulents in it. And I just trim and leave enough room on the stem to stick into the soil and really allow it to create new roots in these planters. You know, the garden's gonna get a little haircut, but then I also can reuse the succulents and put it in other areas and let it thrive in other areas. And it looks really pretty to just have beautiful green planters hanging in front of the studio.
I found these pots 50% off at Rite Aid for 10 bucks a piece. And we just took a road trip to New Mexico to visit my mother-in-law. That's where my husband is from, Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we visited, we visit Santa Fe when we go there. And I am so inspired by Southwest art and style. There were so many things that I noticed while I was there from, you know, just the music to the art the jewelry and the turquoise, like, I love all of that. It's very eclectic and I just resonate with the art and the style overall. These pots felt very eclectic and something I might see in New Mexico. So, and the fact that they were 10 bucks, I decided to trim my garden, of course, cause it was overflowing and then just kind of move my succulents into other areas. I wanted to put a lot of plants in front of my music studio because I like to pop out uh, of practicing or working and come out and sit out in the sun and just listen to the wind chimes and look at the plants. So this particular pot is usually for strawberries, but I thought that this would make a really pretty succulents container. So we'll have to see how well this does, but I'm pretty confident I can care for succulents better than I have in the past. I've definitely had to learn succulents and what they like, but I'm confident the ones in front of my studio will do well. And yeah. So this is an example of something we would try to tackle in a day. While the kids are at school, we try to get out there and work together and get as much done as possible. And we don't do it every day, but we choose a day that works for both of our schedules and we try to make it happen because we do love the garden so much. And it's uh, so fulfilling and inspiring. So I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more garden videos, especially as we move into the next few months. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for subscribing and I hope you have a great day.